Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to honor people in different ways. One of the greatest honors that some of his servants have been given is that they are mentioned inside of the Quran and their stories will continue to be recited and their stories will be continued to be read whenever a person goes to this part of the Quran and until the day of judgment, this is just going to raise the person that is mentioned in honor. One of these people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about inside of the Quran, it is a woman that was in the most horrible of circumstances, dies in the most painful of ways, but her story lives on, not just until this time of ours, but until the day of judgment. This is the story of Asiya, the wife of Fir'aun. Can you imagine being in such a situation where your husband is the most evil of creations, the worst type of person, the one that thought he was not only a god, but the highest type of god, the one that was sent countless signs but refused to believe every single one of them. And in this type of environment, you come out as someone that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the story inside of the Quran, forever going to be mentioned, forever the story will continue to be heard and read and people will continue to reflect upon it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us, وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مُرَأَةَ فِرْعَوْنَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the example Ya Allah, can you imagine this honor? Not just a verse that is mentioning you, but you are being given as an example for all of mankind, for all of people to be able to reflect on it and for you to go back to it whenever you need to reflect on this surah and to understand the importance of this story. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says for the believers, Allah has made the example of, He gives them the example of, of, of who? Imra'ata Fir'aun, the wife of Fir'aun, it qalat rabbib lini indaka baytan fil jannah. That, oh Allah, built a palace for me in Jannah with you. Grant me a palace, grant, reward me for what I am going through. Why does she make this dua of hers? Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us? Like we said, she was the wife of Fir'aun from the worst creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one that not only called himself God, but he says, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Ana rabbukum al -a'la, That I do understand that you have other gods, that you have other deities that you are going to worship, other idols that you are going to bow down to. But one thing that you must remember is that I am your highest Lord. Out of all of the Lords that you have, I am the highest one. Can you imagine this type of kibir? Can you imagine this type of arrogance where a person goes to claim the claim that he made? And it is in this household that she becomes from amongst the believers. She believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Eventually after some time, Fir'aun finds out that she has Iman. What does he decide to do to her? Look at how barbaric he's going to turn. He decides that first we're going to begin punishing her. And when we begin punishing her, it's going to start off easy. All we want for her to do, it is for her to return, leave this religion of Iman and come back to worshiping me. You know, whatever time that you live in, you will always find a Fir'aun. You will always find someone that claims to be the most powerful and that needs to be humbled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know how many Fir'auns have come in our lifetimes and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has humbled them, but they never learn from one another. And the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us this story is so that you and I can learn from Asiya, that you and I can learn from the wife of Pharaoh, that we understand Iman is not restricted to a place, that for in any situation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He guides whom He wills. Those that are guided are going to be tested and through these tests, ease is going to come after. So what happens to her? He begins the punishment off very small. It's just small, you know, beatings here and there and keeping her in jail, not giving her the type of food that she wants and so on. Eventually he realizes that she's not turning away from this religion and she's going to be steadfast. And as time goes on, the punishments continue to increase one after the other. They go up and up until eventually he gets to the moment where he's going to torture her to the point that she passes away. What is the mode of torture that he chose? How is he actually going to punish her? What does he decide to do? He decides that what is the most painful way for a woman to be tortured? He decides that he's going to hang her on the ceiling using her breasts. So he ties her breast and he ties it to a rope and he hangs her from it. And he begins to beat her. Can you imagine the pain that she's going through? We live in a time where the believers are being tested with this and much worse, and they continue to be patient. What gives them this patience? The Prophet ﷺ, he tells us, 
the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he tells us that when he would continue to punish her, she began laughing and she began smiling and this would anger him and he would increase in the punishment and he would continue to beat her and he would say, why is she smiling? Why is she laughing while we are torturing her the way that we are doing to it? He does not realize that her ease has come. The promise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made, إِنَّمَا الْعُسْرِ yusra. Indeed, with every single hardship, ease is just right there with it. It's not that ease comes after hardship. No, but with every hardship right there you have with it, ease that is coming. So why is she smiling? Why is she laughing? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, she was shown her place in Jannah. The dua that she made of, Ya Allah, build a palace for me was actually shown to her. It was a dua that was accepted. And then she says, وَنَجِّنِي مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ And save me from the people that are oppressive. What was this saving that she was asking for? She's on the brink of death while she's making this dua. Do you think that in her mind she's thinking, I'm going to be taken back to the dunya. I'm going to live this life of ease and this hardship is going to end. No, she understood that she was going to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in that was the save that she was going to have of returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we see what is happening to our brothers and sisters and we see them making the same dua, our understanding is that this life will never be as precious. This life will never be as great. This life will never be as sweet as the life that is to come in the hereafter. Didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us that the life of the hereafter is far greater than the life of this dunya. So when she made this dua, she's shown her place and in this instance while Fir'aun is continuing to punish her while he's increasing her torment she doesn't feel any of it all she sees is the palace that she is going to and then it is in the state that she eventually passes away and from that moment she becomes from amongst the people that remained upon la ilaha illallah no matter the calamities that came to her no matter the difficulties that came to her and because of that today you and I are sitting here and we are going over her story hundreds of people will come after us millions of people will come after us and they will continue to read this story and they will continue to pass by this verse my brothers and sisters Sometimes when we look at calamities, this is the outlook that we should be having, that it might be difficult for you and I, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through it is going to cleanse the believers, through it He's going to elevate us and give us such an honor. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those that are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree.